I know their purpose, but you remember I once ministered in a circle John tree. Yes. I assumed you were used to having Templars around, keeping us safe from the mages. The mages in the circle follow the chant of light as faithfully as the Templars, sister. More faithfully than some Templars, even. Some of the things those Templars did when they thought I did not see. Chosen of Andraste, a blessed hero sent to save us all. Am I riding in on a shining steed? I would have suggested a griffon, but sadly they're extinct. Joke as you will, posturing is necessary. I've journeyed deep into the fade in ancient ruins and battlefields to see the dreams of lost civilizations. I've watched as hosts of spirits clash to reenact the bloody past in ancient wars, both famous and forgotten. Every great war has its heroes. I'm just curious what kind you'll be. What do you mean, ruins and battlefields? Any building strong enough to withstand the rigors of time has a history. Every battlefield is steeped in death. Both attract spirits. They press against the veil, weakening the barrier between our worlds. When I dream in such places, I go deep into the Fade. I can find memories no other living being has ever seen. You fall asleep in the middle of ancient ruins. Isn't that dangerous? I do set wards. And if you leave food out for the giant spiders, they are usually content to live and let live. If you go that deep into the Fade, you might find something better left alone. I take precautions to avoid possession. I have no wish to become a demon's tool. In the same light, be cautious here. Cassandra's protection only lasts so long as she survives. It will be interesting to watch this fledgling Inquisition make its way. I will stay to see it, for now. Was that in doubt? I am an apostate surrounded by Chantry forces in the middle of a mage rebellion. Cassandra has been accommodating, but you understand my caution. You might dislike the circles, but if that breach stays open, you'll like what it does to the world even less. Agreed. Hence remaining here to offer help. But now let us hope either the mages or the Templars have the power to seal the breach. Closing the breach is our primary goal, but I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. We would do well to try to recover whatever created the breach. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything?
I'd like to know more about you, Solas. Why? You're an elven mage. Not from the Circle, not Dalish. You're an unknown element. I wouldn't trust my life to a blade before I'd tested its balance. Nor would I. All right. What can I tell you? What made you start studying the Fade? I grew up in a village to the north. There was little to interest a young man, especially one gifted with magic. But as I slept, Spirits of the Fade showed me glimpses of wonders I had never imagined. I treasured my dreams. Being awake, out of the Fade, became troublesome. You said you traveled to many different places. This world, or its memory, is reflected in the Fade. Dream in ancient ruins, and you may see a city lost to history. Some of my fondest memories were found in crumbling cities, long picked dry by treasure seekers. The best of the battlefields. Spirits press so tightly on the veil that you can slip across with but a thought. Any place in particular? I dreamt at Ostagar. I witnessed the brutality of the Darkspawn and the valor of the Ferelden warriors. I saw Alistair and the hero Ferelden light the signal fire and Loghain's infamous betrayal of Caelan's forces. I've heard the stories. It would be interesting to hear what it was really like. That's just it. In the Fade, I see reflections created by spirits who react to the emotions of the warriors. One moment, I see heroic wardens lighting the fire and a power-mad villain sneering as he lets King Caelan fall. The next, I see an army overwhelmed and a veteran commander refusing to let more soldiers die in a lost cause. You can't tell which is real. It is the Fade. They are all real. Have you always traveled and studied alone? Not at all. I have built many lasting friendships. Spirits of wisdom, possessed of ancient knowledge, happy to share what they had seen. Spirits of purpose helped me search. Even wisps, curious and playful, would point out treasures I might have missed. I don't know of any spirits by those names. They rarely seek this world. When they do, their natures do not often survive exposure to the people they encounter. Wisdom and purpose are too easily twisted to pride and desire. I'm impressed that you could become friends with spirits. Anyone who can dream has the potential. Few ever try. My friends comforted me in grief and shared my joy. Yet, because they exist without form, as we understand it, the Chantry declares that spirits are not truly people. Is Cassandra defined by her cheekbones and not her faith? Varric by his chest hair and not his wit? They're not defined by their bodies, but they do have bodies. You need one to be a person. A demon possessing a corpse has a body. A living body. A demon possesses a living mage to become an abomination. They didn't make that body, they just took it over. Technically, your mother created your body. With some help from your father, one assumes? You've thought about this. On occasion, yes. We'll talk later. <laughs> 